approved new power chamber. So, hemocytometer by its definition, so hemocytometer by its definition, we will be able to count different types of blood cells here. Okay, different types of blood cells. So, RBC, WBC count, and your your platelet can all be counted using your new Bauer chamber, your improved new Bauer chamber. So, having said that now, okay, having said that now, when it comes to the new Bauer chamber, when it comes to the new Bauer chamber, um, perhaps you are wondering, paano binibilang yung R noong unang panahon, paano binibilang yung RBC, WBC, e eh, wala pang machine. We do not count it on your on your peripheral smear because that will only be an estimate. Lahat ng nandun ay estimate lang. But here, we, we will be able to somehow accurately um, accurately count the the RBC, WBC, and even WBC. Okay? So when we are discussing hemocytometer, ito yung mga bagay na gusto kong tandaan ninyo. And hopefully, you would be able to make a list of this one para ma-make sure ninyo na you were able to cover everything about hemocytometer. The first one is the location on to where saan ka mismo sa, sa hemocytometer magbibilang. Okay? Because we have a lot of squares in your hemocytometer. There are there are squares um, dedicated for RBC and dedicated for WBC. Secondly, what are the different pipettes being used here? So if you have read of Toma pipette, if you have read of the WBC pipette, RBC pipettes, we have a lot of those things. And also the different diluting factor. Okay, when I say diluting factor, later on I'll explain why we have different diluting factor for RBC and for WBC. Okay, so let's start the first one. So in hemocytometry, so this is the numerical evaluation of form elements of the blood. So meaning to say numerical evaluation or the counting of your form elements or your cells in your RB, in your full blood. So in hemocytometry, it is an estimation of the number of blood cells in a known um, in a known volume of blood. Why is it that I am saying estimation pa rin? If I you said a while back, sir, that it is more accurate than performing it in a in a peripheral blood smear. We are calling it estimation because at the end of the day, the absolute count would be best taken from an automated machine. Okay? from an automated machine. So we have different methods. We have your turbidimetric method, your microscopic method, and your automated methods. I believe I will not be able to cover the automated method here anymore. But um, again, that I will be recording a video about that. I will be recording a video on that. So para ano, um, hindi kuman siya mapalabas lahat sa exam which I think would be best, uh, would be beneficial for you guys, at least ma-cover ko siya lahat, okay? At least ma-cover ko siya lahat. So, I will be uploading videos na lang, if ever, with the automate, with with the topics we will be missing. But, eto lang yung gusto kong i-ano ha, para walang magugulat. Dahil yung automation is part of the routine hematological procedures. There is a possibility that the automation, even if it is asynchronous, um, I would need to include that in the exam. Basta I'll update you. Tingnan ko kung sobrang dami na ng coverage. Hindi naman ako, um, hindi naman ako masamang tao na mag, na, ano, na pipilitin ko lahat magkasya kung hindi naman na kaya. Okay? So, moving forward, let's go to the microscopic method of hemocytometry, which we will be discussing today because we are using your new Bauer, your improved new Bauer chamber. So, of course, you will be needing, okay, you will be needing the three, these three materials. Number one, your counting chamber or your new, uh, your improved new Bauer chamber or your hemocytometer, your pipettes and your diluting fluid. Okay? Your pipettes and your diluting fluid. So, we have the dif different examples of your counting chambers according to type. 
we have your open type, your closed type, your addis, your exton, and your petrov. I believe that in Rodak you will no longer be seeing this, but mind you, okay, our board of exam is ang um, board exam kasi natin mayroon paring mga manual methods. That's why that's why we still have to discuss this. You can actually see this in an ancient book, your Barbara Brown. And when I was in in review, I really did buy and look for a copy of Barbara Brown. And yon book based dapat ang pag-aaral, guys. Ha, book based ang pag-aaral. Hopefully, um, um, you'd be able to ano, you'd be able to um read your product then para hindi siya saya. Okay? So moving forward. Okay, moving forward, we also have um different chambers according to rulings. Okay? When I say rulings according to the linea, okay? According to the lines in the counting chamber. So we have Toma, we have the Twerk, the Fuchs Rosenthal, the new bower, the improved new bower, the imp the base Jones. So the most commonly used counting chamber is the open type Spencer improved new bower. Open type Spencer, the new bower, um, the new bower, uh, improved new bower, chemo cytometer. Okay, open type and improve new power. Sir, do I really have to memorize like everything pa uh, with the rulings? Um, with the rulings and the open types, not anymore. I just want you to um, remember that it is an open type Spencer and an improved new power chemo cytometer. Ayan. So, ito yung rulings na sinasabi natin. So, yung mga count dyan, one millimeter. So, madaming numero kayong i-memorize this coming ano this coming um examination so please remember these things that i am going to say to you which uh which can be found on the notes of my powerpoint and i am currently sending it on your chat box so the following ayan ayan so these are the following am ah, i nag ano sinab Oh, di na, di na nila ginawa. Okay. So, I mean, ginagawa pa rin. Kahit nga nakakita kami ng double head, double tail, go na go pa din. Ayan. Tapos, anyways, later na yung side kwento ko for that. Para hindi recorded. So, um, with regards to, ano, with regards to the, with regards to your, um, with regards to our hemocytometer, okay, this is the, this is the etura. Okay, this is the etura of your, your new, improved new bower. So this is the improved new bower and as you can see parang ha wala namang rulings walang rulings kasi these are like microscopic and this is the cover slip the cover slip of your new bower is different from the usual cover slip and men ito yung laging nababasag so um we usually get have to replace it every now and then okay so as you can see here everyone okay so we have a primary square. So the primary square is a total of, pag sinabi kong primary square, ito, ito mismong lahat ng to. The primary square is a total of, um, a total of um, 9 millimeters squared. Okay, 9 millimeters squared. So each of this is actually, um, itong 9 square na to, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yung malalaking square ha, ito, yan, ito. Wait, I, I'll change the, I'll change. Ay, ay change. Ito. Itong pen na to. Ito yung tinutukoy kong one. Ito. One. Kuha. Kuha po tayo ha. Sorry. Tabingi. So that is one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A total of three millimeter. Uh, three square millimeter. So each of this, okay. Each of this is one millimeter. One, one by one yan. One millimeter. So one by one. So... For this one, ayan, I want to put it this way. So, sana sinusulat nyo rin na ganito, ha? This actually are for your WBC. This four are for your WBC. And remember that this four um, that are allotted for your WBC contains, okay, um, contains 16, 
Okay, they contain 16. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. They contain 16 smaller squares. Okay? Ito namang center na to. Okay, itong center na to, this is for your, this center here is for your RBC. Okay, this one is for your RBC. Okay? And this center square is actually divided into five tertiary square. Okay? So, una ha, ang tawag dito sa buong square na to, primary square. At yung primary square natin, may nine na secondary square. The four outer secondary square are for the WBC. And the central secondary square is for the RBC. Okay? These, okay? These um, central square, <laughs> this central square are divided into five. Okay? Five pa ulit. Dinivide pa siya sa five. And itong five na to, nakadivide pa siya sa sixteen. So, nagigets nyo kung gano'ng ka-complicated yung squares natin. So, ganun lang siya, ha? So, um, ayan. So, this is, uh, this is four. Huwag nyong kakalimutan, ha? Ang WBC, 16 lang yan. 16 squares. Ang RBC natin, 25. Okay? 25. Okay? 25 squares. So, itong 25 squares na yan, na-divide pa siya into 16 smaller squares. Okay? So, in addition to that, please remember this, ang depth po ng ating HEMO cytometer is 0 0.1 millimeter. Again, the depth of your HEMO cytometer is 0 0.1 millimeter. 0 0.1 millimeter. Moving forward, um, sabi ko nga kanina, the central square, okay, Alam po yung central square, ito po mga kapanalig, yan, itong nasa gitna, yung may R. The central square is subdivided into 25 intermediate squares. Okay, 25 intermediate squares. Ang, at ang, ang measurement, the area of this intermediate square is 0 0.04 square millimeter. Sir, do we even have to like memorize the 0 point keme keme? Um, not this, etong etong measurement na to, not anymore. Ha? Pero gusto ko lang alam nyo kung pag sinabi kong central square, outer square, secondary square, nakukuha. So, yun, yun yung aaralin natin, ha? On the, on the, on the notes that I will be giving you, maganda yung notes na yun. Nakalagay doon kung saan nyo bibilangin. So, W, may nakalagay ng W doon. Okay? So, each intermediate square is further subdivided into 16 squares. So, imagine that. Diba? So, the red blood cells are usually counted on the um, central and the four <coughs> in the central and the four corner intermediate square. Four corner intermediate square. Ayan. Four corner intermediate square. So, ayan. Okay? So, that is for your red blood cells. For your Four corner large squares, on the other hand, that is one millimeter, one square millimeter. Bakit one millimeter? Kasi yan, one, one, one by one, that is one square millimeter. So that is for your WBC count. Okay? And it is only subdivided into 16 smaller squares. Okay? So hopefully, okay pa tayo, mga kapanalig. So ano yung import, yung, yung nilagay ko sa inyong chat box that are the measurements that are important for you to remember. Okay? Moving on, ayan, kita nyo, ganyan yung itsura niya. So, in the new bower, actually, when you look at the new bower, you can see the grid lines macroscopically, but very, very minute. Pero pag tingin mo sa ano, ay, winner, ganito yung itsura niya. Okay? So, um, there were cases na ganito yung nangyari. There were cases na, sir, paano pag overlap? Would I count it pag nandito yung, yung ano, cell? Yeah, you still have to count it. Kung baga nandun siya sa linya, nandun siya sa linya, it's still included in the count, ha? So, for the pipette, ayan, meron tayong dalawang, two types of pipette, okay? So, kung meron kang uh, masamang panaginip sa pipette, okay? Sir, ba't iba na naman po yung spelling? Pipettes na ganyan, or TTE, any spelling would do. So, automatic pipette, we have your trainer and your unopet, okay? Unopet, 
So itong Unopet na to lumala, alam nyo ba yung Unopet na rinig ko lang nung nag nagre-review na ako for board? So Unopet, automatic pipet yan for your hemocytometer. We also have the non-automatic pipet, this one, um, the Toma pipet. This is the reason why siguro yung generation natin right now no, would wonder, bakit kaya nila sinasabi na no mouth pipetting? Kasi nung unang panahon talaga, nagmamouth pipetting sila. So imagine na no, nagmamouth pipet sila using your Toma pipet. Your Toma pipet can also be used in your seminalysis. So imagine mo, di ba? Nag-Toma pipet ka, mouth pipetting ng, ng sem, ng, ng for seminalysis, tapos na todo-todo mo yung higop. Ay, just ko Lord. Okay? So huwag na natin pag-usapan yun. So, Toma Pipet, ayan, Toma Pipet, we have your RBC Toma Pipet and your WBC Toma Pipet. Obviously, yung isa para sa RBC, yung pangalawa para sa WBC. Are we clear? So, Toma Pipet and your, um, Toma Pipet and your, um, yeah, RBC Toma Pipet and WBC Toma Pipet. So, sa so anong pinagkaiba later, pag nandun na tayo sa dilution factors, malalaman ninyo. Okay. Now let's go to the diluting fact, diluting fluids. So the diluting fluids are used to disperse blood cells to facilitate counting of RBs, counting of cells. So, ano ibig sabihin nito, sir? Um, kailangan natin ng diluting fluid para hindi dikit dikit yung ating mga RB, yung mga ating cells, so that they would be dispersed with one another. Okay. So we have RBC diluting fluid and we also have WBC diluting fluid. Sir, pag um, remember this everyone ha, pag RBC diluting fluid, isotonic yung solution. Sir, bakit po isotonic? So that the RBC would remain, it's, uh, would um, retain its shape. Okay? Para yung shape ng RBC mo all throughout the counting is still the same. On the other hand, WBC diluting fluids. Sir, Ma'am, kailangan po hypotonic yung inyong solution. Sir, bakit po kailangan hypotonic? And I need you to write this down. Okay? I need you to write this down. Sir, bakit po kailangan hypotonic? Pag WBC, diluting fluid, this is the reason why. Hypotonic to allow the RBC to lies. Para masira lahat ng, para mag lahat ng RBC. At dahil nag lahat ng RBC, ang maiiwan na lang sa solution mo are your WBC. Mas mabalis, mas madali, kaya na ngayon, makakapagbilang sa new bower chamber. Nakukuha po ako. Can I see a raise of hands if I'm clear with the difference between the RBC and the WBC pipette? Ay, dilution fluid. Okay, thank you so much. So, yun yung reason ha. Kailangan mawala ni WBC para hindi siya pang gulo. Nakukuha. Ganon din yung, um, ganon yung um, importance kung bakit may dilution tayo. Okay? Yung dilution ng RBC, papasok siya sa dilution factor. Kasi magtataka kayo, Sir, isotonic tong RBC. So, ibig sabihin, magre-remain yung, magre-remain po yung ating, uh, maiiwan po yung ating um, mga, WBC, not anymore because it will now fall on the dilution factor. Okay? So, we also have platelet diluting fluid. So, the reason, the number one consideration for platelet diluting fluid the, is that it they should be, uh, they should pre preserve the integrity of your platelet while inhibiting their aggregation. Okay? Prevent po yung aggregation ng platelets mo habang nabibilang mo siya. Okay? And remember this, your formal citrate or your daisies fluid is the best RBC diluting fluid. Daisies fluid, okay? Daisies fluid for your RBC diluting fluid. Okay? Moving forward for the different RBC diluting fluid. So in general, madami man tayong RBC diluting fluid. They are, um, they are, um, they are the same in a way na all of them are isotonics, okay? Isotonic solution. So we have your uh, um, HEMS, the RBC diluting fluid. We have your Goers. We have your Toysons. Um, and yan, we have your Toysons diluting fluid. So nandun sa kabilang slide yung iba. 
So your KMs um diluting fluid it initiates mold formation and rollo formation which is a no no because you want each and every RBC to be individual. Your goers on the other hand prevents rollo formation but the problem is that it precipitates protein in cases of hyperglobulinemia and hemoglobinemia. Okay, so another fall for it. So your toisons initiates mold formation, so it should be filtered. Um, it has high specific gravity and it has your stain. Okay, it has stain. So for starters or beginner, it would be very useful. Okay, it would be very useful to use your toisons. Nakalimutan ko yata sabihin sa inyo, no? Now, when counting blood or you're counting cells in your new bower chamber, wala kang stain, usually. Wala kang stain na ginagamit. As in yung ano lang, diluting fluid lang. So, ang ano nun, when you look at in the microscope, alam mong parang transparent lang silang mga bilog-bilog. Sir, paano mo nalalaman na hindi yung double, hindi WBC yung nababasa mo? Kasi yung WBC naman, makikita mo yung nucleus niya kahit transparent. Okay? So medyo mahirap siya sabihin ngayon kasi um, we're not looking at it on the microscope. But um, trust me when I say, madali lang siya ma-identify pagdating sa practice. Okay? Magpa-practice tayo hopefully uh, next year. Ayan. So, ayan ha, guys. I want you to remember Toysons because it's the only... Um, RBC diluting fluid with stain. Okay? Okay? Clear? So, moving forward, ayan, ang ano yung stain na gamit niya? Your methyl violet. Ayan, your methyl violet. Moving forward, that is toisons, toisons, toisons. So, moving forward, we have here your methyls. We have your formal citrate, which is your basic fluid, the best RBC diluting fluid um, because it's, it preserves the actual... Uh, it has a preservative action without mold formation. Okay? And it preserves cell morphology as well. Um, aside from that, we can also use um, NSS in case of excessive ROLU formation or auto-agglutination. And you can also use 3.8% sodium citrate. Um, yeah, 3.8% 3.8% sodium citrate. Okay? So formal DCs, again guys, remember all of this collectively are all isotonic solutions. We go now to the WBC diluting fluids. In the WBC diluting fluids, ang goal natin is to hemolyze the red cell except for metarubricide. What are metarubricide? These are nucleated RBC. Okay? These are nucleated RBC. The last stage in your... Um, your erythrocyte maturation that has a nucleus is your metarubricide. So, the Lewens, okay, um, the Lewens for counting only leukocytes should be capable of lysing erythrocytes without destroying your leukocytes. Or uh, one of the following the Lewens may use, ayan, we can use your glacial acetic acid, which is actually one of the most common. We can also use your hydrochloric acid, your Turks, um, solution. Ito, maganda yung Turk solution. Hindi ito yung shawarma kung nagugutom ka na ngayon. Kundi ito yung, it enhances the leukocyte nuclear definition. Okay? Leukocyte nuclear definition. Am I clear with that, guys? So, ayan yung ginagawa, ginagawa, ginagawa natin for your WBC. The most common is this one. Glacial acetic acid. It is the most commonly available kasi in the lab. So, moving on, we also have here um, important reminders, um, by the way, in, ma in manual um, counting. Do not overcharging will lead to the decrease in cell count. What do I mean by overcharging? Okay? Kunwari, yung pipet mo, magde-deliver ka na ng, ano, magde-deliver ka na ng fluid sa counting chamber. Usually kasi, meron ka ng counting chamber, tapos yung slide, and then dun sa pagitan nila, dun mo ipapipet yung fluid. Okay? So, avoid, okay, avoid um, overcharging kasi mag, magpa-flood yun, mawawala sila dun sa counting chamber. Aside from that, it is important to allow the counting chamber to stand for at least 3 minutes after charging. So, this is Poison's Law of Distribution. Bakit? 
kasi I do um uh, I don't know if you were able to look into the microscope na of a urine pero gumagalaw yun kasi nga water siya di ba solution so kapag pinilit mo magbasa right after charging ang mangyayari niyan gumagalaw yung mga cells so malilito ka pwedeng maulit mo ma-count or hindi mo ma-count yung isang cell dahil nga gumagalaw sila doon sa fluid okay so yun yung ano natin ha yun yung important na reminder aside from that the allowable difference between two chamber counts are 15 to 16 for RBC and 10 to 12 for your um 10 to 12 for your WBC sir bakit po two chamber counts ano ang ibig sabihin mong two chamber counts sir babalikan ko to no Alam nyo, itong nakikita nyo ngayon to guys, ay nasa dalawang position. Okay? Isa sa taas, isa sa baba. So you would count on top and at the bottom. Okay? On top and at the bottom as well. So clear tayo doon. So remember that ha, um, dapat no overcharging and wait for 3 minutes before you read. Okay? So most of the questions here would actually be situational. So I would really encourage you to, um, siguro when you study the lessons, aside from reading the PowerPoint, aside from reading the notes, I'll be sending you and reading the book. You also listen again to the um, recording if necessary. Okay? So characteristic of an ideal um Diluting fluid, except, ayan, nakikita nyo na yung mga tanungan natin. So, isotonic should be um, for RBC, hypotonic for WBC. Cheap and economical, easy to secure and prepare with preservative action. High specific gravity, it should be stable with buffering action without, with buffering action rather, non-allergenic and non-corrosive. Okay? So, Let's start with our um let's start with our um uh, let's start with our um hemocytometer the different steps okay the different step for your hemocytometer So yung nandito kasi is for double for platelets na which is okay for me to miss because we have next sem pa for hema 2 okay So I'm just actually going to finish this guys until um, until the formula for your WBC. Yun na lang, ha? Para hindi na tayo magkandalo-kaloka pa. So, for the steps, ayan. So, for, you have to suck the blood, okay? You have to aspirate the blood into the 0.5 mark of your pipette, okay? 0.5 mark of your pipette. And then afterwards, you would also aspirate the diluting fluid. 100 at 101, uh, for your RBC pipette and 11 for your WBC pipette, okay? For your WBC pipette. And then afterwards, you need to shake the pipette well. Sir, um, do I need to do it manually? No, because in in, in TUA, meron tayong mga pipette shaker. Okay? So ang ginagawa nila, mag-shake lang, okay? May pipette shaker tayo sa, sa school. Aside from that, um, before charging, you have to discard a few drops first from the stem para talagang sure ka na walang bubbles na doon. And then afterwards, you need to charge the counting chamber. When we say charge, we're not talking about electrical charging here, but charging using your, ano, charging using your charge lang. Parang, um, ano tawag mo doon? Uh, it's a charge using your pipette. Okay? Using your pipette. So again, um, in your ano in your RBC you count in your RBC in your five intermediate square central and the central square and the five large squares. So yung double yung sa WBC magkakount ka dun ng WBC magkakount ka din dun ng RBC. Okay. So um, for the WBC outer squares lang. Okay, outer squares. So ito siya. This is how you charge it. Nandito na yung new bower, andito na rin yung cover slip, and then you charge your um, new bower chamber using your pipe. Okay? So for the formula, okay, children, the formula for your RBC count is this one. RBC counted times 10, time, times 10, times 200, times 5. 
ano po yung 10 that is the depth correction factor the 20 the 20 is the dilution factor okay although not constant it depends upon the blood that you are using but the usual yung 0.5 na sinasabi natin na mark the 0.5 mark for the blood is already using the 200 dilution factor okay so dilution factor same thing okay so for the dilution factor ito siya um, volume of the valve uh, volume of the bulb is 100 for RBC and 10 only for your um, 10 only for your um, tawag dito, 10 only for your WBC. So, blood volume use um, may differ. So, kunwari, 100 tapos nagpalit ka. So, um, magbavary yung iyong ano, magbavary yung iyong dilution factor. Okay? Magbavary yung dilution factor natin. So again, remember that the 10 here is the depth factor. Sure, kailangan i-memorize, yes, kung ano yung ibig sabihin. This is the diluting factor and this is the area correction factor. Okay? This is area correction factor which is constant unless otherwise specified. Okay? So, ayan, for your area correction, kung ayaw mo talaga, gusto mo magbilang, so, sige, magbilang ka. So, total number of internal uh, intermediate square for your RBC over the number of intermediate square used for counting. So meaning to say, kasi di ba meron tayong inter, yung counting natin, you counted in um, a total of, sabihin mo ng in, ilang intermediate square yun, 25 for this, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16 times 4 plus 25, yun yung number ng intermediate square mo. So ang ibig niyang sabihin dito, kung saan ka lang nag-count, okay? kung saan ka lang nag-count, yun yung aanohin mo. Okay, so let's try this one. Everybody, okay, copy the formula. So RBC times 10 times 20 times 5. And this is the, ano, this is the, this is an example of a problem that you will be seeing in your, in your exams. So quadrant 1, meron kang 109. So what you're going to do is actually to sum it all up, okay, sum it all up and then start multiplying it with the constants times 10 for the depth correction factor another 10 for the dilution factor and another 5 for your um, area correction factor nakukuha po ako so ilan ang sagot anong sagot ninyo dito anyone so i'll also try to compute it ilan po ang ating sagot mga kapanalig sa paniniwala 109 Plus 93, plus 105, 116, 123. Okay, times 10, times 200, times 5. What is the answer? Ano pong sagot? Ala, tulog na yata sila. The answer is 5,460,000. Cubic millimeter, rather. Cubic millimeter. Ayan. Cubic millimeter, or you can express it um, times 10 to times 10 to 12th power per liter. Okay? So, gamitin na lang natin para hindi kayo malito, para mabilis lang din i-type sa TLC, millimeter mercury, MM3. Okay? MM3. Did everybody got the answer? Nakuha? So, ito yung sinasabi ko, Jericho and the rest. So, when you count, ganyan. You count there, then baba, then you go left, then down, ganyan. This is for the new bower para sure ka na ano, sure ka na nakakount mo lahat. Okay? So, sir, bibigyan mo ba kami ng ganyan? Ang sama ako namang tao no, kung ganito yung exam nyo. Tapos, bibilangin nyo isa-isa yan. One, two. Tapos, 45 minutes lang. <laughs> so, ito yung, ito yung example na to Hindi nyo ito makikita, guys. So, okay mag-alala. Okay. Numero na po agad ang ibibigay. So, for the WBC, okay. Last, last, okay. Last slide for today for HEMA. So, formula for WBC count. Ayan. Um, almost the same. We have your WBC counted on the 4 um, intermediate square times 10. Depth correction. 20 is the dilution factor. All over 4, which is the correction, area correction factor. Okay? Unlike in your RBC, we multiply it. Here in WBC, we divide it. 
Okay? We divide it. And that is it actually for today for hematology. Okay? So, um, hopefully everybody's still awake. And thank you so much once again for listening. So, if you have any questions and clarifications, you can start sending in your questions on our chat box so that I'll be able to answer them all. So, the time is um, 10.28.